welcome back to another video. And in this one, I bought a couple of whiskey barrels that I don't necessarily have anything planned to put in them. So what I'll often do when that happens is I'll just set them up to essentially be a compost bin where I'll just get free soil. I'll just make soil with them. And by the time spring comes around and I want to put something in them, then there'll be a bunch of soil that's really good that will be ready to go. So I don't actually throw away any of my soil either. So when I make soil like this, it is always uh, permanent. Like I don't throw anything away. Um, the way, and I'll talk more about that when my soil video, my soil mixture video will actually come up when I release that video. But the, you know, essentially in a nutshell, with all the microbiology, like the beneficial fungus, bacteria, and worms, they'll just constantly recycle that soil, so you never have to throw it away. So I like to set up these containers, get some soil going in them, so that I have soil for them by the time I actually need them. And it's also a great way to just save a little bit of money on buying a pre-bagged soil or anything like that, which I often find to not be as good as the stuff you make yourself. And being in autumn time, you have the whole winter, autumn, into spring to uh, make your own soil. Which is like I said, it's oftentimes gonna be a lot better than what you buy in the store. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is uh, with this container, I already, first thing that I do with any container is I'll cut out a piece of window screening. In this case, it fits exactly the bottom of this container. Um, I like to do that because it's essentially just a one-time thing. I'll cut it out once and I'll never take it out because this is not going to decompose. It's uh, made out of carbon fiber, so that's, that's never going to decompose. So it's just a one and done for me. So I'll put this in the bottom first. I already pre-cut it just to kind of cut down on the length of the video. And then from there, you can really use any type of free resource, ideally, that you can get your hands on. Because, you know, obviously doing in this autumn, in autumn, there's a bunch of free resources like leaf bags, uh, wood chips. Uh, I get a whole bunch of uh, coffee grounds that I get for free. So there's all kinds of things that you can get right now that you don't have to pay for. So I really would recommend that you do that. But it depends on where you live. You know, you might get something for free that isn't readily available for me. But that's exactly what I would do. Just go for what is readily available. But for most people, that is going to be leaves and probably also coffee grounds. Like most baristas, they'll just give it to you. I just get mine at Starbucks. They give them a big trash bag full. That's how I like to do it. And it's a great green material since you are essentially kind of setting up a compost bin. That's a good ingredient to have. There's only one ingredient that I would put in any, any uh, bin, no matter what, it is, no matter what ingredients, the, start, the starting materials you have, and that is charcoal. Ideally, this turns into biochar when you actually start planting into it. But if you don't plan on using your, your bin for a while, or your container, then it's okay to use charcoal. And the only difference between charcoal and biochar is that uh, the charcoal is still void of nutrients. It's just the charred wood. Biochar is essentially full, filled with all the nutrients, like your nitrogen, nitrogen especially, it sucks up nitrogen like crazy. So if you give it, if you do this early enough, then you get all, all winter long for that charcoal to be sucked full of nutrients and be your biochar. Uh, biochar lasts for thousands of years in the soil, uh, so it's really a per perfect soil amendment. It's a one and done type of deal. I would highly recommend it and I use it in all of my soils, which I'll go into a little bit more detail when my um, soil mixture video comes out. But that's something I wouldn't skimp on, no matter what the base of your soil is, that's always, I recommend that that's in there because it's also beneficial fungus and bacteria that'll also make the charcoal their home in all the little nooks and crannies. So they'll always be present. It's really an excellent, an excellent soil amendment. So the first thing that I'm going to do, in my case, is put a little bit of leaves on the bottom here, just out of any of the small particulates of the charcoal or uh, any of the other ingredients that I have here. 
that they don't fall through. The amount of charcoal that you want to use in your container is about 10%. It can vary anywhere from 10 to 20%. And it's not, it doesn't have to be exactly any of these numbers as long as it's kind of in that ballpark. A little bit more, a little less, it's, it's not a problem. It's not a big deal. The, the only thing that I'm going to use that I did have to actually spend money on is a little bit of shredded up bark, which is already looks a lot like soil anyway. So I like to use that a lot because it's, it's already fine. The roots and everything will grow into it just fine. It doesn't tie up nitrogen. You know, there's no wood chips in here. It's essentially all bark. So this is a great ingredient to use. And that's the only thing that is going to be in here that is purchased other than my charcoal, which like I said, I wouldn't skip on. The charcoal can be a little expensive if you buy it in the store. If you're going to do that, I would recommend you buy lump charcoal. Never use briquettes. Briquettes have a whole bunch of chemicals added to it. Uh, you don't want that. Lump charcoal is just charred wood. That's really all that is. It's used for cooking. That's what I use for my barbecuing. So I can also use my wood ashes in my soil as well. I have a video that I made about that, uh, fertilizing uh, for your plants for the winter time. That's essentially what I use there. But other than that, don't use any lighter fluids, don't use any, any nasty stuff. And you can use this in your soil. You can also make it yourself, that's just fine as well. I don't currently have the means to do that, so I don't. However, if you can, that'd be the best way to do it. And then that's another cost that you're taking out of the equation here. So this can be completely free and I would keep it as low as possible because you have so much time to have all this turn into soil that there's no need to spend a bunch of money on soil, really. So I'm going to put a little bit of a heavier material on here, which is a shredded up bark. You can see it is very fine. I'm gonna sandwich just a little bit, but I will mix it all together once I have some of the base ingredients in here. The next is charcoal. Don't breathe in the fumes. So that's a big bucket of uh, coffee grounds. Mix some of that in there. Now, as you can probably already gather from this, is I'm not measuring anything out. I'm not really worried about the percentage of any of the ingredients that I'm using. You know, I'm using fine materials, so I'm counting on the worms and just a normal breakdown of things to break it all down and be good soil by the time it comes time to use it. But it doesn't have to be in specific ratios. I mean, nature doesn't work in specific ratios, so why should we? Just make sure that the charcoal content is about 10 to 20 percent because everything else is going to be more worm castings at some point anyway. So, all together, I'm not going all the way down to the bottom to prevent the soil from falling up. Okay, I'm only going to fill this up to about halfway. I have another container on the side I want to do. So a lot of these materials that I'm using right now are, um, are very carbonous materials, lots of carbon. You also want to add some green materials, which is the, the coffee grounds is one of those things. And I also have some fruit scraps here. I would highly recommend that you use fruit and vegetable scraps in this type of scenario. Uh, it's just a great way to use some of this. If you don't have a worm bin, which I do, uh, I will just use the extras from that worm bin in here. But essentially what we got here is just a little piece of cardboard that came with the container. So that'll go in there. I got a whole bunch of banana peels. They'll go in there. I got a little tomato that started to, started to rot. I can go in there. I got, you know, a little pear course. Stuff like that. I can all go in there. By the time that spring comes around, this will all be decomposed perfectly. 
and you won't even know it's in here. We're literally making a compost container. That's really what we're doing. But for a lot of places, it rains more during the winter, or even it snows. It's just a perfect time to be doing something like this because you just have a lot more water available that starts to decompose everything, starts to break everything down. I like to put this bark on the top because it weighs the leaves especially down, which is nice. I also have some Brussels sprout peelings here. Use that. It's just a paper bag, you can realistically just throw the whole thing in there. I think I will. Whole bag. Add a little bit more charcoal to this. Well, ideally, you don't use these big chunks like this. Uh, this will over time break down a little bit, like it'll get chunked up a little as it, you know, ages. But ideally, you just use these bigger chunks for cooking. You know, and then, especially if you buy a bag of lump charcoal, you'll find that towards the bottom, especially, you'll get the smaller chunks, and those are perfect for soil. So the type of, the size that I would recommend that you use, kind of depends on the container. Like a bigger container like this, you can get away with a bigger chunk size. But for most containers, a little pebble size is good. It doesn't have to be exact, again. I mean, this is, it's not rocket science. Maybe this is about the biggest I would go. But stuff like this is definitely too big. So I'll be digging those out. But everything else is just fine. Right. Hold my breath as, I, breath as I'm doing that because you do not want to breathe that in. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more coffee grounds here. Cover up the charcoal. You don't have to use this much coffee grounds either. I just have a lot of it, so I really don't mind using quite a bit of it. I've got two trash bags full sitting outside still. Or in the garage, I mean. So I got plenty of it. If you have less, use less. That's okay too. And I'm gonna add a little bit, just add a little bit more leaves. Like so. And then we we'll use a little bit more of this fine shredded up bark. All right, so this is what that's gonna look like. And it doesn't look like much right now, but by the time spring comes around, this will be nicely broken down. It'll be beautiful soil, ready to be have something planted into it. So I hope you consider doing this. I think this is great for people that don't have a compost pile. You know, currently I don't have a spot to put it, so I think I just use containers to essentially make a compost pile out of. It's really no different, but it's an excellent way to get some free soil that is going to be much better than what you get in the stores. So I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you'll be doing some of this yourself, and we'll see you in the next video. Tot de volgende keer!